Welcome to Face to Face. Our guest today is Gable Clark. She is a partner and a principal at SGA, a Boston and New York based architecture planning and interior design firms. She is one of the top interior designers in this market. In addition, she is also a certified generation trainer. So, in her practice of interior design, she combines her interior design skills with various generations of work workforce to make an effective work experience and environment for people to work. So, we are going to talk to her about multi-generational space in today's workforce. Gable, welcome to our studio. Thank you. And uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you today. Likewise. And uh, so it's a very interesting concept because all of us who work or either for ourselves or with other people, mm -hmm. the first thing comes that workforce is so diversified mm -hmm. and every generation has its own interest and they think, oh, this, you know, why I'm working here? And so there are a lot of questions about generation yep. and it must be quite challenging to design a space in a big scale or even a smaller scale mm -hmm. to meet the requirements of this space for these multi-generations. Mm -hmm. So before we get into the nitty gritty, let's start, how did you get interested in um, uh, multi-generational uh, space and training? Sure, so the topic of the multi-generational workplace became very uh, prominent probably a little over 15 years ago when millennials were first coming into the workforce in droves. And I started doing a lot of research on that because it's certainly relevant to how we design space and um, you know want to create environments that are functional across all generations. So I found a company in Minnesota called Bridgeworks and they specialize in generational insights. So they have a lot of wonderful data on their website and then they also offer a train the trainer program. So I took that course a couple of years ago and every year they provide me with updated information as new insights become available. Uh, and I have a, a training course that I share with people in the industry. So now let's talk about a little bit, what are, what are the, these different generations sure. you take into yep. account when you design this space? Yep. So today's workforce is made up of four generations. So we have baby boomers, we have Generation X, we have millennials, and then we also have Generation Z, which is just beginning to enter the workforce. So mm -hmm. they are the generation just behind millennials. And what are their different interests, for example, if you can define sure. these various yep. generations? Well, each generation has different ways of communicating and collaborating, different ideas about formality at work and work, work ethic and different ways that they like to receive feedback and give feedback. So there's a lot to consider, um, not only when you're designing a space, but obviously when you're working with other people and you want to get the best out of each other and create that knowledge transfer. So. One of the ways in which the generations differ is collaboration. So typically a baby boomer is going to be very polished and very formal, so they might prefer, prefer a meeting uh, that, you know, a set meeting rather than an impromptu conversation in the hallway. Um, Gen Xers tend to be very efficient and they are happy to have meetings, but they want there to be a purpose to the meeting, so they want them to be very efficient. Um, millennials thrive on collaboration and they might be much more likely to have that impromptu conversation at the water cooler and really start to dig into a project there rather than waiting for a meeting setting for that to happen. Um, and with Gen Z, they're still um, you know, entering the workforce and there's a lot to be learned about them, but we know that they're collaborative, but they're also digital natives because they've never known life without technology. So for them, collaboration is a little bit different. Um, it's sort of the idea of being um, alone together. So if you think about you know, working in a Google document, for example, you're, you're working on your own, but the technology allows you to work collaboratively with other folks. So it's different methods of doing the same thing, um, and it's helpful to understand who you're engaging with and who you're communicating and collaborating with before you might try to set up those moments because you want to make the other person feel comfortable so that they're able to share their ideas with you most effectively. Uh, I may be an exception, but I feel like I belong to each one of these generations. <laughs> I can fit in anywhere, yeah. but, but anyway. Yeah. 
So now let us, uh, if you can define the age groups, what are the age groups sure. for different? So baby boomers are born between 1946 and 1964. Mm -hmm. um, Generation X is 1965 to 1979. Uh, millennials are 1980 through 1995, and Generation Z is born anywhere between 1996 and 2010. So they really say that um, your identity is formed in terms of your you know, generational um, preferences during your formative years, which are your teenage years. So obviously there's still some folks um, in Gen Z that are you know, yet to go through those formative years. So it's, it's a pretty long duration. but. Some of those um, on the older side are entering the workforce. You know, they might be your interns or your 21-year-old, 22-year-old in the office. And so we're starting to uncover those insights now. But they'll start to evolve over time because we're not, you know, quite finished learning about Gen Z yet. So now as you describe, it seems that, of course, the interest and the style is quite different from mm -hmm. one generation to the next generation. And think about collaboration between the baby boomers and the the latest generation G. Mm -hmm. How do you take into all these factors into account to design a space? How do you mm -hmm. convert this into a space? Mm -hmm. I think it's important to just recognize that you know your workforce is made up of a, of a diverse group of individuals um, and a lot of different generations, and their needs and their you know their comfort level is go is going to vary. So for us, it's about providing a variety of space types where someone can go to have a you know a heads down quiet moment if they need that, either based on their generational preferences or based on the task at hand. Um, but it's important not to design skewed towards one generation. We're really starting to see clients um, you know, want to hear the voice of everybody in their organization because together that voice kind of culminates in a solution that's a little bit more universal. Um, because you know, if we, it's not all about hot desking and kegerators, right? Which might be something that appeals to Millennials and Gen Z, but boomers want that place to have that more formal interaction. Um, and that knowledge transfer needs to take place. So we can't do everything on the computer. That that face-to-face -face human interaction is a very, very important part of not only business, but just interacting as human beings. So we want to facilitate environments that you know, make technology seamless, so it's not something you have to think about. It's a given. It's there. Um, but also provide those opportunities for that human interaction, which is really critical because we're, we're social people. Sure, sure. And what about the lifestyle? How the lifestyle factors? Because I think lifestyle has become an important mm -hmm. um, uh, ingredient for companies to retain their talent and yep. get exciting people. Mm -hmm. So how do you take that into account in designing a space for multi-generations? Well, I think um, you know there's there's some differences with regard to what the workday looks like that mm -hmm. is that is important. So, you know, typically for boomers, it's very much come in, put your head down, do your work, do your job really, really well, um, and you know, leave at the end of the day, or you know, your workday is perhaps longer. People people stayed at organizations a lot longer. Um, Xers tend to be a little bit more about efficiency. You know, I, I come in. I turn on my work mind, I do everything I need to do for work, but then when I go home, it's, it's, it's my time. Millennials and Gen Z are much more fluid in their work-life balance. So um, I think one of the challenges that we've seen is, you know, if a millennial or a, a Gen Z wants to have more flexible uh, work hours or, you know, leave in the middle of the day to go to the gym, you know, the boomer might think, well, why are they not here, you know, from 9 to 5? Those are our work hours. Meanwhile, they're logging back on when they get home or they're working early hours. You know, they really use, utilize the technology to their advantage in that regard. So I think, you know, opening up the conversation in that regard to embrace the fact that, you know, people aren't only working when they're at their desk. Um, they can be working, you know, leveraging the technology or in other settings. But it's a conversation that needs to happen because certainly if you walk by someone's desk and they're not there, you might think they're not working, but that's not necessarily the case. So, okay, sure. Yeah. So now uh, let's talk a little bit about, like, you know, the secondary spaces, like, you know, a kitchen or mm -hmm. cafeteria or meditation room, mm -hmm. other conference room. Sure. How how they are, how, how they figured into this whole mm -hmm. generation space. Mm -hmm. Well, again, I think um, with Gen Z, as I mentioned, they're very tech um, innate. 
they're digital natives, so they've grown up with technology, but they may be lacking some of the soft skills that come with face-to-face -face interaction or picking up the phone and calling someone. So providing opportunities for them to have that face-to-face -face interaction is extremely critical. Um, on the flip side of that, because they're so inundated with technology, um, some of the things that we're starting to see evolve um, from that generational insight is they, they're kind of um, craving that break from technology. So a tech-free zone, a meditation room, a space in the office where there is absolutely zero technology and it kind of forced to unplug. So we're seeing that as a result as well. Um, but then, you know, again, it goes back to providing a variety of space types so people know how to use the space and then um, really, you know, leveraging signage and wayfinding and graphics to inform people how to use the space as well because particularly now where you've got some free address or people working from home, the workplace is really a destination and it looks a lot different than it did 15 years ago. Um, so no longer do you walk in and your only place to work is your desk. The entire office is your landscape, but you need to know, you know, kind of the unwritten rules of that. Is there a quiet zone? Is there a tech-free zone? Is there a collaboration zone? So that if you're in those settings, you're, you know what to expect from your fellow employees in terms of So, so this is where you also have a group which works with you at SGA, is a branded environment. Mm -hmm. And that's where they play that role. They do. So tell us yeah. a little bit about that. Yeah, sure. So. Um, they're a highly integrated part of our practice and involved in almost, if not every, interior design project that we do because we're working with companies that really want to tell the story of their unique business, their brand, and their culture. And that's done in a lot of ways. Um, certainly, you know, logos and signage are kind of the lowest common denominator in that regard. But when it comes to um, you know, communicating how space is to be used, using iconography and graphics and things of that nature to kind of playfully indicate how different spaces are to be used, but then also thinking about how to really express that company's brand in the space. Um, we like to kind of get under the hood with companies day one and understand what motivates people to be here. There's, there's always a point of pride um, and working for an organization that you can find if you ask enough questions. And so we find what those nuggets are and then we celebrate them in the space in a way that really inspires people because, you know, it's not all about the people who visit the space, but the people who work there every day. You want get to get the best out of them. So if you can create an environment that really celebrates the brand, um, you know, is rich with color and, and graphics and just visual interest, then it really does motivate people to do their best work. Okay. Now, uh, also let's talk a little bit about, I know this, uh, the, the one angle is for different generations. How does it play out in different type of industries? Say, for example, interior space for life sciences or law firm or financial services mm. or technology company. Yeah. Is there any difference in the culture or in the space or yeah. more or less the core is the same? Well, it's a good question. I think, you know, the generational issue is certainly important regardless of what industry you're Every in. Sure. And also your brand and your culture is critical regardless of what industry you're in. So I think where you fall along that spectrum really depends on what your business is. Because if you are, you know, a law firm or a financial services firm, you might have different programmatic requirements than a tech firm where everybody's sitting in an open office environment. So you have to kind of figure out who you are as a company. And, you know, as designers, that's what we do. We try to help you, you know, within the confines of your comfort level um, as a company and, and the business that you do, because there are certain functional goals you need to maintain. You know, what does what does your office landscape look like um, in the confines of that, of that context? Now, can you talk about some of your clients or some space you have designed or? Sure. Sure. Um, right now, um, we're working on some really fun projects. We're, we're doing a space for Citizens Bank. Mm -hmm. So we're doing not only the base building design, but we're doing the interior design as well as the branding and graphics. And they have a very strong uh, brand story to tell. Um, so they came, with a, came to us with um, a package of you know, everything from fonts to Pantone colors and things of that nature. So we're working hand in hand with their team to express their brand in a way that's meaningful to them. Um, so it's real, been really fun working with them. Uh, we recently finished a project for Living Proof, the mm -hmm. hair care company. Mm -hmm. And they are great because they're firmly rooted in science, but also um, very much about the art of, of what they do. So they've got a very strong brand story to tell. 
and their employees are incredibly passionate about the work that they're doing because they get such positive feedback from um, the folks that buy their product. So one example um, of a way we express their brand is to take some of that positive reinforcement that they've gotten from their customers and uh -huh. we created what we call the love note wall which is essentially quotes from different customers about how great their product is mm -hmm. and that sits in the open work area so if you're coming to work every day um, you're inspired by that and you realize you know you can make a very real connection between the work that you're doing and and the end result that it has okay now um, the last question to you is mm -hmm. um, uh, do you provide some training if anybody interests, anybody wants to learn about uh, this generational space? Mm -hmm. Sure, yep. I mean, for me, like I said, it was, I took the training so that I could help people understand how to design spaces that cater to all generations, but I also took the training because I personally want to learn how to communicate and collaborate with folks of all different generations. So. I came back and gave the training to SGA, so my, my employees, okay. my colleagues, and my friends at SGA. Um, and we had fun with that. And I've given it to a few different organizations um, throughout the region. And it's really fun. Um, it's about an hour and a half long. There's music trivia. There are prizes. Um, but essentially, the goal of it is to break to understand the generations first of all um, and then break down those stereotypes because stereotypes can often be very negative and one-dimensional so we want to break those down and understand what makes each generation tick so that we can develop some empathy and then learn how we communicate and how we potentially clash and then how we can ultimately connect okay. now before I let you go mm -hmm. uh, we want to know a little bit about you so you joined uh, SG about 15 16 years ago mm -hmm. And before that, you were uh, teaching architecture, right? I taught uh, at the Boston Architectural uh, College mm -hmm. now, then Center College mm -hmm. now. And uh, before that, I was working at different architectural firms. Uh, firms, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So, um, and again, this is, I promise, this is the last one. Okay, sure. so let's have a couple of, uh, um, you know, questions, just, you know, okay. fireside chat, okay? okay. So, so, number one challenge today in designing work space for today's what that will be the one critical challenge i think it's just you know getting people to get comfortable understanding how people work and you know providing allowing their employees to provide feedback that can inform the design solutions i think a lot of times people might be wary of well if we ask people what they think they're going to ask for the moon and stars and we're not able to give them that and so there's a little bit of nervousness around that but what we always find when we ask people what they look for in their workplace the answers are simple it's they want to be able to do their job more effectively it's little things you know people aren't asking for corner offices and things of that nature they just want technology that works or a huddle room that they can pop into and things of that nature so I think when people are open to the idea of kind of putting it all on the table at the beginning um, we certainly get the best results out of that. So who will be your best client? Um, well, it's hard to pick just one. Okay, no, I'm just, <laughs> you know, just less, like, you know. Honestly, it's mm -hmm. the folks that, you know, we really get to have the most rewarding experience when people recognize the expertise that we bring to the table as designers. But what we say to them is, we don't come to the table with any preconceived notions. You know your business better than we do, better than we ever will. But our first order of business is to get to know you. So there has to be an openness and a transparency about, who they are, who they want to become, and then there has to be a trust between us because we, you know, we bring some expertise to the table as as do they. So the best results that we've had are really based on those partnerships that are really rooted in trust. So do you work directly with the tenants or developers or a combination of both? It depends on the project. Um, we do a little bit of everything. Um, we certainly do a lot of tenant work, like I mentioned, um, with Citizens Bank and um, Living Proof, for example, but we do quite a bit of work with developers, and I think that's really fun as well because you're creating a sense of, of you know, there's place making, particularly where it's whether it's a new development or um, kind of you know refreshing an existing um, asset to really kind of draw and attract tenants. So it's a lot of really fun work, um, and sometimes we're working for the landlords who are trying to you know get get folks to lease their space. So a little bit of everything. 
Excellent. Gabriel, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. I learned so much. And okay. it's uh, really right on the point. I think it's, there is a great need for this type of generational space because we are living in that environment and technology is changing everything. Yeah, that's who we are. So we have to understand each other. Right? Uh, excellent. Okay. Thank you again so much. Thank you.